Hello, um, today we will work on minimum spanning trees. Uh, what are minimum spanning trees? Um, okay, so uh, there are two keywords. The first is spanning, or three keywords. One is tree, then spanning, and, and minimum. So minimum here means uh, minimum cost. Minimum cost. So let's have a quick uh, review. Okay, suppose this is the graph that we have. It's, it's a possible uh, network. We would like to find a tree. So a tree is, is a set of edges that uh, is a spanning tree. So it connects every node together. So from every node in the graph, you can move, move to the other nodes uh, using this tree. So this is called spanning tree, okay? So a tree is a, a graph without uh, cycles. If it's spanning, it means it, it goes to uh, every nodes in the graph. So this for this this in the, this is is an example of, of of a spanning tree, okay, and and this is not, this is not, okay. So if you pick one spanning tree, you can compute uh, the cost of the tree by uh, summing up the cost of the edges, okay. So this tree, the cost of this tree is two plus eight. Plus seven plus two, and this is um, nineteen. Okay, but thi although this is a spanning tree, it is not a minimum spanning tree because you can find a tree with a smaller cost. So probably this one is has smaller cost. So let's try. So this one has smaller cost. So what's what's the cost? It's five plus three plus four plus two. And this is uh, 14, okay? But is this the minimum cost spanning tree? Um, if you look closer, maybe um, you can see that uh, instead of using this edge, okay, we can use this edge, okay? So we, we can sort of think of it this way. So we just uh, remove this edge. So let me build another tree by... Uh, Removing this edge, the five edge with, with the two edge. So let's call, let's use the green. So use this edge and then uh, this. Okay, the green tree is the cost of the green tree. Is this a spanning tree? Yes. So what's the cost? Two plus three plus four plus two, and that's um, eleven. Okay. And this is the spanning tree in the graph, okay? All right, so we will look at one algorithm for finding this spanning tree. In the algorithm class, you learn, I think you learn two algorithms. One is prim, prim's algorithm. The other is crew So because this is the lab for algorithm class, so we will focus just one algorithm. For, uh, for the other algorithm, you can you can find a review video on on the website uh, on various YouTube channels. I will provide some more links as well. Okay, All right. So the idea of Kruskal algorithm is it's another greedy algorithm. It's greedy algorithm. It, in a way, it picks try to pick the because you want a minimum cost spanning tree. So we we will uh we'll pick edges with um, smaller cost first okay and we try picking that and we make sure that we also get a spanning tree okay so in this case so let's look at uh, this example first okay suppose we want to use Kuska algorithm we will uh, start by uh, picking the edges by weights so the, the the in the implementation we will sort edges by by weight first, and then we use that ordering to to consider edges. But here, uh, let's let's try to do it. So uh, this is the the cheapest edge. So two, I, I just pick it two and two, and then I pick three. You can see that uh, there's no uh, cycle here yet. Okay, and then I pick four. Okay. And that's a spanning tree. But maybe uh, uh, you might not want to end it there because the graph is larger than this. We might consider more edges. So we want maybe we want to add five. But here you can see that 
adding five uh, lead to a cycles. So we, 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 we ignore it. Okay, so we, we don't add five. And then there's the seven. If you add seven, then again, um, th there's a cycle. So we, we ignore it. And we want to add eight, but again, as another cycle. So we ignore it. So, so that's the kind of the idea that we, 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 we implement um, Kuska algorithms. Okay, so that's the Kuska algorithm. So let's see quickly why why don't we want a cycle, okay? Um, when you have a cycle, um, the spanning tree won't have a cycle anyway, right? But if you are the the largest edge here, the edge is with the highest cost, you can see that um, along these cycles, the other edges are, are better than you, right? Are better than you, okay? So if you have a tree, Okay, if you have a solution that that somehow use this edge in some way or another, you can always um, you can al always uh, take this edge out. Okay, you can always take this edge out and find a smaller edge on this cycle to replace it, and and you you have a, a cheaper trees. So this is like the case that I I show you here. I have five here. But then um, you can remove five and you add two there and you have another tree with a smaller cost. So since you want a minimum cost spanning tree, so you better uh, ignore the, the edges with a uh, high cost. Or basically you can start with edges with smaller low cost and then keep building up the tree from there. Okay, so let's see uh, a larger example. Okay, so this is the graph. And we will we'll try to follow the idea of Kuska algorithm to uh, build this spanning tree. Okay, so we will we'll start by uh, uh, we start with uh, cheaper edges. So let's see, uh, there's one here, one, and then uh, two. Is there any other edge with two? No. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, and then uh, I add uh, three, and then I add four. Okay. Um, this four here, if I add it, I, I have a, I have a cycle, right? So I, I just, I'll, I'll ignore it, okay? I cannot add it because it's a cycle, I'll get a cycle. So let me highlight all the nodes. Okay. Basically, every node is, 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 is a component in, in its own, so I highlight it first, okay? Now I add. Uh, is there any other four uh, four edges? Uh, okay, this is an edge with four. Okay, I can add it, and then five. This is five. Can I add this one? No, right? I cannot oh, because I'll, I'll I'll get a cycle anyway. Okay, so I ignore it, and then I have what do I have? Five is. Okay, no more five, and then six, six, and then seven. Again, I cannot add this because the, it'll give me a cycle here. So I have to ignore it. And then seven here, okay. Um, eight, eight here. But again, this is a cycle, so I cannot add it. And then nine again cycle nine again cycle I, I cannot finish yet because this node I still don't get a spanning tree right because this node is not connected to the other nodes okay so quick quick fact uh, I have one two three four five six seven eight nine nodes nine nodes I need eight edges. Okay. Now currently I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. So I need more. The last one. Okay. So can I add um, nine here? No, because that's another cycle. Okay. Can I add nine here? I cannot. Right. And then so next edge would be ten. So this is ten. I can add it. Okay. 
and then um, I'm done, right? But I can continue to run the algorithm. The other is we'll always produce a, a, a cycle, so I, I'll have to ignore it, okay? This 10 is not okay. 15, again, another cycle. 20, that's a cycle. So can you see the cycle here? This, this one. Okay. So I cannot add it. Okay, so in the end, this is the, the tree that I have. Okay, you may have uh, crossing edges like that, but they're not they're not intersect, right? Just just they just cross it when you draw it. Okay, so this is the result, and this is the minimum spanning tree that we built using the uh, Kuskow algorithm, the green one. All right, so let's look at the actual algorithm. So basically, uh, in in the cruise car algorithm, we, we sort edges by weights, and then we start with an empty tree, and then we look at each edge in order by the this sorting, right? And we basically, we want to add, uh, okay, in the beginning, the, the tree is empty, okay? And you look at the edges based on weights. So, and if add E to T, so say, say the, this is the first edge, you can add it without, Introducing a new cycle, you add it. Okay, so the algorithm may like run like this, and so on. Then that. You may add stuff like that. Okay, and then if at some point adding an edge uh, gives you a cycle, you should just ignore it. Okay, so you try to add e. You're thinking about adding e, and if it does not create a cycle you add e to the tree okay so the idea uh, the, the key the key step is to uh, figure out if adding e would create a cycle or not okay the cycle un under the current tree okay so how, how can you uh, figure out if adding an edge would give you a tree uh, if give you a cycle one way to do that is, is to to make sure that um, so if you look at this example, the in 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 the uh, in the running of the Kuska algorithms, you start with a, a set of nodes that are isolated, and then you keep adding edges. You you sort of like connect them together, right? And um, you can see that if I add, uh, if you look at this edge, can I add it? Yes, right, because there no there's no cycle, but this edge is not. It's not allowed okay um, you can see that if 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 I only look at the two endpoints of the edge um, if they belong to the same so so as the algorithm progress um, the graph has a bunch of connected components okay and if I if I try to add it just belonging to two different components like that then I won't introduce any cycle right you can see that from the example. But if I try to add edges, the, the, the green one here, like that, or, or this edge, or maybe this one, okay, that one. Uh, if, if the two endpoints of the edge belong to the same same components, uh, you can see that uh, it will lead to a cycle. So, so the idea of checking this step, so this step, okay, we wanna we if you wanna be more precise on on how to do that, so we look at each edge u v, and then this condition, okay, would say that if would be the same as if u and v belongs to different components in T, and then I add it e, and then I need to uh. Somehow, I need to keep track, right? I need to say that uh, update info that you and we now belongs to the same component, okay? This is what I need to do, okay? But if you look at this edge, if I add this edge, okay? Let's go to adding this edge. This is you and we. It's not just you and we belongs to the same component, right? 
um, this whole this whole set, this whole component, and this whole component, they have to be uh, become the same component. So it's not just like uh, you and we belong to the same component. What we actually need to do is like we need to update the info that the use component and we component uh, is combined, right? Uh, becomes become the same component. So this is something that we need to to keep track so that we can perform this check. Okay, so um, again, the, we want to check if add uh, u and v belong to the same component. So we need some data structure for doing that. And that data structure for doing that need, need to be able, you need to be able to do two things. One is that if you want to check if you need to belong to the same component, another is so, um, is is that is the data structure that would allow you to uh, to say that uh, there these two components is merged, right? Okay. So the first the first uh, operation, this one, is called define operation. This one is called union. Okay. Union and so the data structure that we will look at so that we can implement Kruska algorithm uh, efficiently is called a union file data structure. Okay. So we look at that. All right. So um, let's see the actual data structure. So before we, sorry, before we see the actual uh, union file data structure, let's see the abstract view first. Okay. So um, it's a data structure for keeping track of a set of uh, sets. Okay, so we have a set of element v. Okay, and um, initially uh, this each element in in the set. So you have a big set. Okay, v, and each element in the set is its own uh, set. Okay, like that, and then you can ask a uh, find operation. Find operation. It will return the ID of the set containing the vertex, uh, the element U. Say for, uh, let's say uh, each of this set has an ID in some way. Okay, we wanna we want this ID to represent the set. So when you say uh, find U, it returns the ID of the the set, and you can call you can call union. Okay, that would basically um, combine the two set like that. You may union this one, and then you union the whole thing to get the whole set. And after the union, if you call uh, find of this set, this this uh, element, or the find of this element, it should return the same ID because now it belongs to the same set. Okay, so um, you can get the ID of the set, and you can union two sets. Okay, uh, when you call union, um, you can check if the two elements belong to the same set and just ignore or you can assume that these two are in the different set already okay these are two ways to implement union okay so when we implement uh, the union file data structure this is the abstract view okay we have a set and we have a, a set of subset of this set and each subset is this this joint so the other name, the other common name of this data structure is called uh, this joy set. This joy set data structure. Okay, this joy set. All right. So when we actually using it, um, it's not gonna be just any any set. Okay. So the set that uh, this is a concrete view. Okay. So basically, we have an elements from one to n minus one, and initially the set uh, are like this. Okay. And when you call find u, you put some in index here, it returns the ID of the set, and we call union, it takes two set and combine them. Okay, so we assume that these are in different set. Okay. Um you can you can double check inside union to make sure that they, they belong to different set, but sometimes we just ignore and we say uh, the user of the data structure need to figure out first. Okay. We can do that. Okay. All right. So let's see how this this data structure can be used to implement uh, uh, the Kruskal algorithm. All right, this is the same graph. 
but I have uh, the the notes with numbers. Okay, so basically, uh, we would order the edges. Okay, and we we will start uh, adding edges. Okay, to the tree, and initially you can see that this is the list of the components. Uh, each component contains only one node, so the set each each set has only one element. Okay. And now let's see, let's try to uh, simulate the Kuska um, algorithm again. So I add one here, right? After I add one, you can see that this two set two and three, right? They has to belong to the, uh, they has to become the same set, right? So let me edit it. So I, I would put something like this, two and three, two and three there, okay? Now, um, I am going to add the next edge. So I'm, I'm looking at this one, okay? Um, I need to make sure that two and four, the two endpoints, belong to the different component, okay? I'll, I'll use this set, right? I look at two, two belong to this set. This is the component of two and four, uh, has its own component, right? So they belong to different component. So I can add this edge, okay? And after I add this edge, I need to update the data structure to, basically I need to move four to this, okay? So this is my new new component. Okay, the next edge that I need to consider is, is uh, where is it? It's three here, right? Three here. Um, the two endpoints are zero and eight. So zero and eight. They belong to the different component, so I can keep this edge, right? But then I need to uh, combine the two sets. So let me um, change my notation a little bit. Uh, if they are on the same set, I just uh, put them on the same line, okay? So it would simplify my union. So zero and eight, same set. So I need to uh, union them and then put them here, okay? And then um, the next edge is uh, what else? Uh, maybe four here. I want to add four here. But you can see three and four. They are on the same set already if I add it. So I'll create a cycle. Right. So I cannot I cannot add it. Right. Okay, this is the first edge that we cannot add. Then I have another four here. You can see two and six two and six, different component, okay? So I can add it, safely add it, and then I need to uh, move six to here. Okay, so let's continue a little bit. Um, I have, what else do we have? I have five, I have five. So this edge five uh, is between six and, six and uh, four, which belong to the same component already. So I, I cannot add it. But this is five, is that right? It's between five and eight. So five is here, eight is here. So good, uh, I can add it. So I add it and then I need to union the two set by taking five to here. Okay, you can uh, you can continue uh, on, on this algorithm by uh, adding more edges. Like, uh, let, let's do another one. Uh, it's it's going to be a big merge. So I cannot add five. Let me mark it there, okay. So the last is 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 six. Uh, that we will do is six, right, six here. Okay, zero and two belong to the different component. So I can add safely add it. I add it, and then I need to uh, union the two set. So it's a really big component, and you can see that the set here represent the component that we we already have, right? Sometimes we ha may have uh, more than one component, and but as we add it is the number of component decrease. And in the end, we 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 end up with just one component, and that's the result uh, spanning tree. Okay, I hope you see some idea on how how we could use uh, union and find to um, to implement the Kruska algorithm. Okay, in the next clip, we'll we'll see the code and and we'll see how we use union and find the code, and then we'll see how to implement um, the, the union find data structure. Okay.